Welcome to today's Walk in Wisdom. We're in Psalm 143. I'm just going to read a short line, one sentence from verse 4. My spirit grows faint within me. My heart within me is dismayed. Why is David's heart so dismayed? The Septuagint tells us that this psalm was written by David when he was fleeing Absalom's rebellion. Imagine that. Being on the run is bad enough, but running from your son will make you feel like the whole world has gone awry. It's one thing for you to have a colleague at work attempting to sabotage your plans. It's one thing to have a neighbor upset with you and constantly irritating you. It's one thing to have a friend who betrays you. It's one thing to have somebody slandering you, somebody gossiping about you. But when it is a member of your family, hmm. It's hard to imagine anything worse than that. Remember how Jacob had a favorite son, Joseph, and he made him a coat of many colors that set him apart from his brothers. That didn't turn out so well. Absalom, likewise, is a favorite son of David's. David loved him above his other children. He was the charismatic one. He was the good-looking one. He was the shrewd one. David favored him above his other brothers and sisters. Now, what this means is being a great leader doesn't necessarily make you a great father. You want to be a great father, of course. We all want to be great fathers and great mothers. Nevertheless, sometimes when you're a great leader and you have everything going your way, it doesn't necessarily make you the smartest one on the team for being able to raise your children in the way that they should go. David never had a good model. His father failed him through neglect, and so David overcompensated and gave his son so much privilege that Absalom felt entitled. And when you feel entitled, you'll reach for something that God says isn't yours. Absalom reached for the scepter. He felt entitled to it, thought he could run things better than his daddy. When we're working in the vineyard of the Lord, we need to make sure that we put into our children all of the necessary ingredients that will equip them for a successful future. That doesn't guarantee that they will make the right decisions, but it gives them the best opportunity to be able to do so. So they need love and security. They need time and attention. They need discipline and boundaries. They need balance. Consider the kindness and the sternness of God. Kindness, sternness, that's balance. When you're a king and you're used to having everything going your own way and having privilege and honor and power and, and strength and everybody bowing down to you, in fact, all of the kingdoms of the world bowing down to you, then balance doesn't come easy. You have to work at it because above everything else, you are a role model to others, especially your family. And you need to raise your family in the ways of God as best you can because they, as that is your family, will either qualify or disqualify you. And I don't mean disqualify you in the way of, you know, you have to fulfill certain obligations and your children have to be perfect in order for you to be acceptable to be in ministry. I mean that you'll be spending so much time concerned and worried and praying 
about your children if things are going awry in their lives. You'll be spending all of your time trying to fix their problems. Uh, all of your time will be taken up, consumed with dealing with issues within the family. And so you won't be able to devote the time to the ministry that God has called you to administer. Yeah, unless you have been able to get it together in the home, in your family. Now, raising children, it's just not as easy as it looks and every age has its challenges. Nowadays, you raise your children with great trepidation. Uh, all the phones and computers with social media and TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, people are so self-engrossed they think that the whole world wants to know that they're doing the most mundane and basic of things. Like, they'll post something on Twitter. I did my hair today. This is my coffee that I'm about to drink. These are the baked beans that I have just cooked. Look how they're shaped. I did it perfectly. And people are so consumed with themselves nowadays. We've produced a narcissistic generation who are self-consumed, just like Absalom. So consumed with themselves that words like service and sacrifice have become foreign and strange language. That's imbalance. There was a time when you could preach about servant-heartedness and people would get excited. But nowadays, if you're not preaching about five ways to get a blessing and ten ways to be successful, people will leave and go to a church down the road. Children used to help their parents out. Nowadays, you can't get them away from their phones. The truth of the matter is, if we want to exemplify Christ at all, we need to change our motives for why we do what we do. And we need to know that it's not about me but it's about somebody other than me. This is why serving in the house of the Lord is so important. You'll not model the right attitude to your children if you aren't servant-hearted. Of course, there's many who use their service for the Lord as an escape from their responsibility of being there for the family. Once again, that's imbalance. Ministry requires balance. You don't want to be looking behind you one day, over your shoulder one day, and find you're running from something that you've created. By being balanced, you'll become the role model for your children and for others that they need you to be, and that will equip both you and the next generation for the work of the Lord. And that's the wisdom from God, from Psalm 143, for our ministry today. God bless you. We'll speak again tomorrow.